welcome to the video on the mean value theorem and monotonicity. Okay, so first we're going to start off with the mean value theorem, usually abbreviated as MVT. Okay, so first of all, um, we're going to have, we're going to assume that we're on the graph of a continuous function. Okay, so we have a uh, continuous function we're starting with. All right, and I'm just going to call that our f of x. All right, so let's say we have something such as, I'll just draw a graph. Okay, so uh, let me draw a more horizontal line there. There we go. So here's our x and our y axes. And then let's say we have something, some graph that goes like that and continues on, right? So let's say we, we pick a point here, okay? And we pick another random point here, okay? So here's AB, here's our interval, right? So what the mean value theorem says is that um, for any uh, two points, so here's A and here is our F of A, okay? So let me label that here. So this is our F of A. And then B goes up and it, it lands on the graph here, so this is our f of b, that's our height there, our y value, right? So uh, once we do this, so the mean value theorem, it starts off by saying that the secant line between any two points, so once we find our two points, we draw a line through both of them, okay, on our graph, so it's going to look something like that. That was pretty good, I, I'm impressed at myself. Anyway, so um, we have a secant line looking like this, okay? And what the mean value theorem says is that um, on this closed interval, AB, um, somewhere in, in, inside of it, so in the open interval, AB, so somewhere inside, not including the endpoints, there is a value C such that the tangent line at that point is, is uh, parallel to our secant line. So here's our secant line, right? That's our secant line between the two endpoints. And then, so basically, if we shift this secant line up and up, and up, there will eventually be a point where it touches only at one, touches the graph only at one point. And this one point happens to be right here, okay, on, on, the, on the graph that I drew. And if we draw our, uh, a vertical line down and touch the x-axis, this would be our point C, our random point C uh, inside the interval, the open interval A, B, okay? So here's our tangent line with the same slope as the secant line, okay? So basically, uh, so that's what it was graphically. It's just saying that for some point inside our interval, there's a tangent line that's parallel to our secant line. But formally, uh, how would we state this? Um, so formally, we're going to say, so formally we have that uh, we're going to assume something. So we're assuming, assuming our uh, f of x is continuous, continuous on the closed interval a, b. Okay, so this includes the endpoints and is differentiable and differentiable on the open interval a, b. So it doesn't have to be differentiable at the endpoints. Then uh, this is the mean value theorem I'm st I'm, I am stating right now. So mean value theorem um, is formally saying that assuming f of x is continuous on a, b, closed interval a, b, and differentiable on the open interval a, b, then there exists, exists, um, at least, at least one, one value, one value C uh, in AB, in the open interval AB, such that we have that the, the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope of the secant line. So such that, and I'll draw our conclusion up here, okay, such that the following, we have that F prime of C is equal to F of B minus f of a over b minus a okay all right so this is the slope of the tangent at point c so slope of tangent at point c and this is the slope of the secant slope of secant line okay all right so that's basically what it is um, i'll write our formula on the next slide again just so we can see it in a less cramped form so what it's saying again these are the conditions for the mean value theorem. So the basics are that we have a function f of x, which is uh, a continuous, continuous on closed interval a, b. This is one of the conditions. The other condition is that it is differentiable on the uh, open interval a, b. Okay, so then our conclusion, so these are our conditions, conditions of the mean value theorem. Okay, and our conclusions are the following. So conclusion or conclusions are that uh, there exists or there is basically at least 
one, uh, one value C, value C, uh, within or in the, the uh, open interval AB such that we have, uh, and here's the all-important formula, F prime of C, so the first derivative at that point, the slope of the tangent line at that point C is equal to the slope of the secant line formed by our endpoints, formed by connecting those endpoints, okay? So here's that secant line part, okay? So this is the secant part, the secant side, and then this is the tangent side at one point in the interval, okay? So that's basically the mean value theorem in a nutshell. Uh, now let's do an example of how we verify it. Okay, so let's say we give a uh, we are given the question verify the uh, mean value theorem, okay, with the function and I'll give you one f of x is equal to uh, square root of x, okay, and then we have that um, a equals one, a equals one, and b is equal to nine, okay. So that's all we're given. Um, so we're gonna verify the mean value theorem. So what is the mean value theorem, uh, anyways? So we're gonna say uh, this is, again, I'm just going to write the all-important equation uh, relating to the mean value theorem. So it's this one right here, okay? So then we have a b minus a. So what we need to do is figure out the right side, basically, and then we're going to see if we can find a c value. So, okay, so here's our goal. So is to find the right side, find or evaluate, evaluate uh, right side, okay? So the secant side, right? That's the that's the one we can work with most immediately because we have information for that. Okay, we have our function and we have our two points. So we can just plug everything in. We'll find the right side. And then our objective is to um, find a value C. So then we're going to find a value C uh, in the interval, in the open interval AB. So in this case, that would be 1, 9, uh, such that, such that, ST, such that, um, this is true. This equation is true. That this equation is true. Okay, so that's our goal. Uh, let's start off by finding the right side. So what we have to do is find, so we know our a is 1 and b is 9. So we're, what we're trying to do is find an f prime of c uh, equal to f of b is 9 minus f of a, which is a 1, over 9 minus 1. So if we plug in a 9 into our function, we have f of 9 is equal to the square root of 9, which is equal to a 3. And then if we plug in a 1 there, we have f of 1 is equal to square root of 1, which is also just a 1. Uh, that just comes out as a 1. So now we'll plug this into the equation, into our formula here, uh, on the next slide. Okay, so we have that f of 9 minus f of 1 over 9 minus 1. We found f of 9 to be a 3 and f of 1 to be a 1. And then on the bottom, we have an 8, right, 9 minus 1. So then we have 2 over 8, which is equal to a 1 over 4, okay? So again, this was just the right side. This had to do with the secant, so this is our right-hand side. So I'll just put right-hand side, okay? And then now for the left side, what uh, what is f prime of c? That has to equal our 1 over 4, okay, um, in order for the mean value theorem to be verified and proven um, true, okay? But before doing that, we have to, before even finding a c, we have to figure out what is f, f prime of x, what's the first derivative. So, let's figure that out. Um, our original function was f of x is equal to square root of x, which is also the same thing as x uh, to the one-half power. Okay, so f prime of x is going to be the first derivative of that, so we're going to use our power rule, we're going to bring that guy down in front, so we have a one-half in front, and then x to the one-half minus one, is 1 half minus 2 over 2, so that'd be a minus 1 over 2, okay? So now we have something that looks like uh, a positive 1 over 2 times a radical x on the bottom, okay? So now that we have that, uh, this is our f prime of x, and I'll show you where we go from here on the next slide. So we have this piece of information that we want our f prime of c to equal 1 over 4, and now we know that f prime of x is equal to 1 over 2 times radical x, so, in order to get this c in there, uh, all we have to do is just plug in a c for the x, right? So, f prime of c is going to equal 1 over 2 radical c, okay? And now, we know that we want this, this thing, to equal 1 over 4. Therefore, this thing over here must also equal 1 over 4. So, let's set those equal to each other. So, we have 1 over 2 radical c is equal to 1 over 4. Okay, and see how here now we can solve for our unknown variable, which is c. So if we um, 
raise each of these to the negative 1 power, we can flip the fraction. So we get 2 times radical c is equal to a 4. All right. And then we have, um, if we divide by 2, we get radical c is equal to a uh, positive 2. Okay, so then if we square both sides, we get c is equal to positive 4. Okay, and furthermore, our, this c value, uh, I'm going to have you recall that our uh, interval, our open interval or our closed interval, was 1, 9, right? Because a was 1 and b was 9. So that was our interval, and 4 happens to lie inside of that interval actually inside the open interval, right? So that, that was the requirement there, that it lies inside, which it does. So what we can say is uh, the following conclusions. So since, um, since 4 uh, lies in our open interval 1 to 9 uh, and satisfies and satisfies the equation f prime of um, 4, is equal to uh, 1 over 4, which is equal to f of 9 minus f of 1 over 9 minus 1. Um, this verifies, verifies the mean value theorem. Okay? And end of problem. No.